Stretch here. Yeah, you okay? I ordered you check. Yeah. That's why I would be okay. It's okay for you. Yeah, yeah. Am I able to put something?
test the audio? Yes, Football Park is the scene for this round eight match in the NPL Men's New South Wales match of the round, and it features top of the table Western Sydney Wanderers, and they're hosting St George FC. Newly promoted St George FC. I wind you down. You off. Test is good. Thank you. 
signal when the players walk out? I will give you. I will give you five seconds. When the players walk out, yeah. walk out, yeah. When they when they walk out, out. Yeah. Yeah, so what do you think, Pat? So, don't, don't launch it until... I don't know, what do you... I'm not going to comment that. We'll still wait for the players to pop. Yeah. yeah, so they're going to do a quick warm-up. They're going to do a quick warm-up and then...
It's a good evening from Wanderers Football Park. This round eight NPL Men's New South Wales match of the round. And we're featuring for you the team atop the NPL New South Wales ladder in the Western Sydney Wanderers. And they're hosting the newly promoted St George FC. It's a much anticipated round eight match of the round. And it's a pleasure to have your company across the Football New South Wales YouTube channel. Tony Tanous with you here from the home of the Western Sydney Wanderers. And we're really looking forward to this. Wanderers sitting atop the ladder on 18 points, two ahead of the Marconi Stallions, coming into this match on the back of four straight wins. As for St George FC, they're currently on six points. They're sitting in 13th spot, but after a disrupted pre-season, they're really starting to settle into life in the top flight. And they'll be encouraged by their past three matches, which have included draws against St George City, as well as Arpia last week. A game that they led 2-0 at one point. In the end, Arpia pegged them back deep into stoppages. But encouraging signs for Yane Talchevsky's side. And they come here with no changes to the side that did draw 2-2 with Arpia. So looking at their lineup in goals, the keeper is Daniel Axford. The back four, Nick Keller, Juru. The mid central defenders are Mark Rodich and Jaden Sido. And on the left, the captain in Troy Danaskos. The holding midfielders, the experience of Patrick Auger alongside Harry Jones. In front of them, in the number 10 role, is Connor Quilligan. And then on the flanks, Peter Grozos and Justin Foon and Nikola Skataric leading the line. As for the home side, the Western Sydney Wanderers, they're coming off a victory last week. Their fourth, as I said, in a row against the Wollongong Wolves in that top-of-the-table clash. And they bring back all their scholarship players and nine changes to that side, starting in goals. He's one of those that did play in that match in Tiger Harper. The back four, Dylan Chikluna, Don Gurdic, Alex Bonatig and Anthony Panatzopoulos. The holding midfielders are Riley Hollingdale and Alex Badalato. On the flanks are Marcus Eunice and Aidan Hammond. And it's a front two of Zach Sapsford and Nathaniel Blair. And they're the players that get this game underway. Our referee for this one in Stephen Lucas. And it will be the home side. The Western Sydney Wanderer is running from left to right in the traditional black and red colours. St George with their reverse strip, all white with the green socks. This famous former NSL giant. The first time we showcased them in the NPL Men's New South Wales match of the round. So good to have them up in the top flight. And they, as I said earlier in the intro, are starting to really settle into life in the New South Wales top tier the first time back in the top tier in 10 seasons and they're really keen to stick around and make an impression and they're starting to really enjoy life after a disrupted pre-season, lots of injuries it's taken them a few rounds to really get going but the signs have been good over the last few weeks as I said couple of draws in their last three games. They might have had a couple more points. That's a nice ball over the top here looking for Marcus Eunice. They've managed to catch St. George in behind and Eunice looks across. It's an early chance and Blair can't get it on target. Competition's leading scorer. Seven goals for the campaign. Lovely little flick on from Sapsford into Eunice and it's a nice early ball to Blair. Positive early signs for the home side. The confidence up. Four wins on the spin coming into this. They've won six of their seven matches so far. Only the one loss. And that confidence, they lead as far as the attacking statistics are concerned as well. They've scored 23 goals so far in their seven matches. Six more than any other side heading into this round. Strong challenge in the midfield. Rodic is stepping up on Blair. Trying to win possession here and play it over the top. Justin Poon's in behind. Poon starting on the left side of the attack. Part of the front three. It's Gitaric through the middle. Peter Grozos on the flanks. 
Now it's Baralato. Happy to just keep possession here now, the Wanderers. And it's Opolis. Now it's out here through Shikluna. Over the top he goes, looking again for Yunus. It's an early outlet. You see the game plan from Andrew Christensen. They look like they're targeting St. George FC. Left side in the early part of the match, Troy Danaskos. The experienced skipper who has a real attacking intent. And that battle certainly looks like one of the highlights of this match. Danaskos, lovely work from him, just to link it up through the midfield. Now feeds Skataric. Connor Quilligan, last year's player of the season in football, New South Wales League One. He's another settling into life in the top flight after making a real impression in the second tier. Here is Harry Jones, another experienced face alongside Patrick O'Shea. It is a very young squad. Disposal of Yane Talchevsky. And they come forward now into counter-attack. Skataric looks for the switch of play out to Grozos. Who's back on this turf, a former Western Sydney Wonder Academy player. He feeds it back into Skataric. He turns now. Can he get it onto the left foot? Lays it across. Harry Jones, happy to lay it out to Danaskos. Danaskos opens the scoring for the away side. He's got a real knack of getting forward and scoring goals. There's a skipper in Troy Danaskos. He's been in wonderful form this season. And he's got his second of the campaign. A player who bagged eight goals in the promotion season last year. Excellent work down the right-hand side. Involving Peter Grozos. Skataric's feet was excellent. Harry Jones kept it alive. And Danaskos took the shot. He took a deflection. And the keeper in Tiger Harper couldn't do much about that. And the away side said that they're starting to really settle into life in the top flight. And they'll feel good about the start here. Just the tonic. Battle for possession. It's going to be a free kick to the home side. They kept their first clean sheet last week in that 2-0 victory. Over the Wollongong Wolves. They've conceded early on here. They'll be disappointed about that. But they're known for their goal scoring threat. The Wanderers now look to hit back from this set piece. They've got Sapsford in there. They've also got Blair. They can't get it beyond Rodic. Here comes Badalato. That's going to test the keeper. And it's gone in. Can you believe that? Badalato can't quite believe it himself. That one looked like it was an aimed cross, but it's caught out Daniel Axford. And we are level here. And the RBB that are gathered on the far side are up in song now. That last did, that lead didn't last long at all, only a couple of minutes. And the Wanderers have levelled it up. This round eight in DL Men's New South Wales match of the round. Badalato levels it up for the Wanderers. Hope that sound is coming through the, the ground effect mic. Stung early on, goal from Danaskos on five minutes, but Badalato, a bit embarrassed about the way that one panned out, but he'll take it. Daniel Axford, a former Western Sydney Wanderers Academy custodian. That's one he'll want to forget. Challenge between Bonatig. In fact, it was done. Donny Gerdic, Nikola Skataric. Here is Bonatik, waiting for the movement. It comes from Hollingdale. I mentioned those nine changes to the Wanderers starting 11 from last week in Wollongong. Well, Hollingdale and the keeper in Harper, the two that did start in that win victory over the Wolves. Such a young squad. 
squad which featured many 15, 16 and 17 year olds last week. They did the job. The scholarship players unavailable. Played in an inter-club match last week, the first versus the second. And that was prioritised. The international window. Important to keep the wheels ticking for the A-League squad. Yeah. That team fighting for a spot in the top six of the A-League. You're going to understand that. But it gave the opportunity to the younger, the next batch. And it's an important challenge there. Rodich points to the ball. Eunice was looking to get him behind. His speed. Lovely touch there from the right back. And Shikluna. Nice bit of build up here now. Bartolato, the goal scorer. Looks to go to that right hand side again. Spring it in behind Danaskos. What a battle, as I said. No sooner had I mentioned that than Danaskos has gone down the other end. I spoke about how he loves to get forward and attack, and he's got the opening goal, but Wonder is a hit back. And here come St. George down the right hand side. An important touch again. It, referee pointing to the chest, saying that it came off the chest. Great strike there, and what a save from Harper. It was Quilligan who didn't need a second invitation. He hasn't hit the back of the net yet this season in Connor Quilligan, but he unleashed with power there. Great venom, and it was sharp from Tiger Harper. He got down quick. Featured in now. NPL New South Wales Team of the Week. And round seven was superb in that victory over the Wolves. And he's produced an excellent save to keep it at 1-1. Chance here again. Wanderers have to clear. Still on here for Skatarić. On the left foot he goes and he forces another very good save from Harper. Chances... Racking up for the away side, St. George FC. Can't give Skatarich too many chances. He's got two in two weeks. He's starting to find his feet at his new club after making the move from the Mount Druitt Town Rangers. Cross comes in, dealt with at the near post. Still alive here. Jones gets it towards the back stick. It's going to be a free kick to the Wanderers. Thanks for your company across Football New South Wales YouTube. Plenty of action taking place. You might have noticed in the background an ambulance. We had a late, delayed kickoff here. There was an injured player in the under-20s for the Western Sydney Wanderers. And he's just been taken away in an ambulance. We understand that he's okay, Navid. Alizada, we hope he's okay. Suffered a cut in the back of the head towards the end of that under-20s match, with the one, which the Wonder has won by four goals to three over St. George FC. And we do hope that he's okay. As Sapsford comes forward, now looks to feed it down that left-hand side. Chance for Hammond. And now it's on for Eunice. What a block it was. Danaskos, that battle continues. A prodigious youngster against the experience and it was Danaskos who recovered well to get that defensive effort on. Great to see him back in the New South Wales top flight. Troy Danaskos. You would have been familiar with him from his days at Marconi. They came back up to the top flight. Also spent a bit of time at Sydney Olympic in 2019. Since then, he's made St. George FC his home. He's got the captain's armband. What a job he's doing. This side that, as I said, had a really disrupted pre-season after a, that playoff victory over the Mount Druitt Town Rangers. Here's Rodich, one of their new recruits. Three of them part of the squad tonight. 
largely been about continuity for Yane Talchevsky. He's done an amazing job over the last couple of years at St. George FC. And he's rewarded most of the players that have earned that promotion with the opportunity to showcase themselves. They love to get it down, play positive attacking football. They were known for the, being the entertainers of the second tier last year. They're certainly mixing it in this game in the early part of the match. Here comes Yunus, who continues to look a real threat, gets it in. Rodic with the header, falls to Badalato. This time he's shot. Couldn't get that one on target. He's crossed earlier, deceived. Daniel Axford ended up in the back of the net to level things up for the Wanderers. And a terrific start to the match, end to end, plenty of chances. Harper's already made two or three outstanding saves. Good first touch from Badalato. He's Hammond. New recruit from the Central Coast Mariners. A real entertainer. And his link-up play with Eunice is certainly going to be one to watch. They play on the respective flanks, but expect them to float around, especially Hammond, who's picked up a spot in the midfield. Here he is, turning. Lovely technique. And now Hollingdale. Good work from Skataric to work back for St. George. Skataric waiting for support. He's good on the dribble. Former academy player himself. Spent some time at the Central Coast Mariners before a move to the Mount Drawtown Rangers. Here is Jaden Sita. Now Jones. And five games taking place across the NPL New South Wales scene this evening, this afternoon. We've already had a couple of games, a couple of results, a couple of incredible results. Apia, last year's premiers, who could only draw with a late equaliser from Nick Sullivan last week against St George FC. They've gone away to the Sutherland Sharks this afternoon and won by seven goals to nil. Led by four goals to nil at half time. They were able to build on it in the second half. Lovely touch that. That's it, the free kick. It might be more than that. And the referee who was right on the spot. A terrific first touch from Connor Quilligan. And he drew the challenge then. From Donny Gerdic, who's the first player to be booked. 15 minutes in here at Wanderers Football Park. We saw a thriller at Belmore with Sydney Olympic somehow coming away with a 4-3 victory. Two goals in stoppage time. A remarkable late comeback after they trailed by three goals to two. Here's Quilligan, who's starting to really influence things in that number 10 role. The time he couldn't keep it. Not quite on the same wavelength there. The skipper in Sapsford, along with Nathaniel Blair. Sapsford tried to play it in behind. It's been a real avenue for the Wanderers in the early part of the match. Trying to catch the St. George. Back four out. Nice little touch from Grozos. We heard from him in the build-up to the match. You might have seen him featured on our NPL New South Wales socials. Giving his thoughts ahead of the game. He's the Nascos again with a bit more room. Jones influential early on. Shea who does love to split the defenders, drop off and set up the play. Rosos. Nice build up this from St. George FC. And they've got it into Skataric who waits for the movement. It comes from Danaskos. Looks across. Still on here for Justin Poon. And he turned on that and he couldn't quite get the purchase to send a goal bound. But an excellent build up. Lovely patience there from Yane Telchevsky's side. 
They played it through Skataric with O'Shea involved, and they finally found Danaskos. He's Skataric again, causing all sorts of headaches, and he wins the free kick. An excellent turn from the striker. As I said, his confidence is really up on the back of a couple of goals. Back-to-back weeks. And this is in a really promising position. Really moving the ball through the middle. Well, at the moment, the visitors. And they've got this free kick. And Skataric is interested in it. Panatsopoulos just giving the Wanderers goalkeeper and Wall some time to organise themselves. Looks like it will be Skataric, although Danaskos also over the ball, the two left footers. Danaskos steps away and he is going to leave it to Skataric. Harper's got five up in the wall. Can Skataric get it up and over? It's a terrific strike, but it's comfortable for the keeper. He did get it on target. Didn't quite get the power to test Harper. He's already shown this season his quality as a player. With the pedigree. Kashima Raisol, one of the top clubs in Japan. Understand that he does have some Japanese lineage, but also some Australian lineage as well. So he's come across to the Wanderers. The end of last year, he's really starting to make the number one spot his own. Really catching the eye. Not much you could do about the opening goal. It took a deflection as Danaskos hit it. Reed is outstretched, right hand. And he's bounced back with a couple of key saves immediately. Terrific start to our round eight in PL Men's New South Wales match of the round. Thanks for your company, Tony Tanus, with you here at Wanderers Football Park. Two other games kicking off simultaneously at seven. PM. And you can see the intent from the Wanderers to try and get Eunice in behind. Here's Skataric using his body well. He's got Grozos available. One side. And he slides it through the middle for Quilligan. And it's 2 1 now to St. George FC. A terrific bit of work from Skataric. And Quilligan gets his first of the campaign last year's player of the season in football New South Wales League One. A season where he managed to hit double figures. He scored 13 in the campaign, so he certainly has a knack for getting forward. And that was wonderful. Skataric is really looking in terrific form in the early part of this match. He's proving a real handful for the likes of Gurdic and Bonatig. Holding the ball up, using his body, bringing... His teammates into it. First time you showcase both of these clubs in match of the round, season 2024. And they're certainly putting on a show. He's Badalato. Mentioned that disrupted preseason and the impact that that potentially had on fitness in the early part of the season. So they've taken a bit of time, St George, to start to really get going. But we saw signs last week. I was really impressed with the way that they pressed up here in that first half at their high position. It really made it difficult for the likes of Uchino. Josh Simmons, Kemba Watamalo to get out. And they're showing signs of that here. 
against a team that's flying at the top of the ladder. Shikluna does well to find Badalato. Now Bonatik. Out to Anthopoulos in into the back post. He looks. It was Danaskos with an important defensive header. Already seen Badalato take a couple of efforts. That one, he couldn't get it on target. And it remains 2-1. To St. George FC. Those nine changes for the Western Sydney Wanderers. Five outfield players that feature on their bench today all took part in the match that started last week. Got plenty of quality to come off the bench. Depending on what's required from a first team perspective, we might see a couple of changes. We generally do the halfway point of the match. Notice that Nathan Barry, he's on the bench today. He's one of those players available. He's already had a taste of A League football. This has Alex Fonte. The Wonder is featuring against the MacArthur Bulls on. Easter Monday. Anatopoulos looks across. Sapsford equalises. It's a wonderful first time finish. A terrific delivery down that left hand side from Pantazopoulos. And the Wanderers make it 2 2. Sapsford with a first time finish for his fourth of the campaign. We're only 25 minutes in. We've had a four goals already. This game that promised to entertain to attacking, forward-thinking sides. And it's certainly living up to the billing early on. A wonderful finish from Zach Sapsford. Credit to Pantazopoulos. First time delivery down the left-hand side. Kalajuru gives it up now. Sapsford looks to slide it in behind for Yunus. The race is on against Danaskos. The experience wins out. He's got his body between the man and the ball. And he's got the free kick. Danger there. Kalajuru fortunate not to be punished. He's had a terrific start to the season. The right back who scored a wonderful goal last week against Arpia. The opening goal of the match. For his second of the campaign. That time he almost made a gift of it. And the wonder is so efficient in counter attack. He'd love to hit units down the right hand side. Strong challenge there from Girdic. It's on here for Hammond. A live wire in attack. And he'll look to take on Kalajuru. Hammond looks to go around in. Kalajuru does really well. Stuck to his task defensively. Twice. St. George FC have gone ahead. On both occasions, their lead has barely lasted a couple of minutes. It's the wonder is hit back quickly. Goal scoring has not been an issue for the wonder is this season. As I said earlier on, coming into the round, six clear of any any other team as far as goals for are concerned. 23 has become 25. And that's for St. George. And struggled for goals, particularly in the opening five rounds of the campaign. Starting to get a few more in the last couple of weeks. Last week, got two in the opening half, only to be pegged back by Apia a week before. They suffered a 3 2 loss to Sydney United 58. Four goals in the last couple of games at the two today. 
The goals are starting to come for the, the team that scored 67 in the regular season in Football New South Wales League 1 last year. This is lovely from Quilligan. Confidence up after hitting the back of the net. Nice build up this. Quilligan again. Now Skatarich on the left foot. And it was important. That time from Gerdic. Was born in Croatia. Much of his junior career at Sibenek. As Hammond now looks to drive forward. Danaskos does well to hold the Wanderers up. He's Hollingdale, who got on the score sheet last week, a holding midfielder. He showed his ability to get forward and strike from distance. Terrific goal for the opener against the Wolves. And here's Hammond playing right on the shoulder of the last defender, but just went a bit too early. The flag has gone up against him. Their assistance for this one. Alessandro, Lana, and Rory McFarlane. Now fourth official supporting Stephen Lucas is Ethan Svaragulis. He's Sito. The story he's, what a backstory his is. Miss Jones looks to hit the feet here of Poon. Nice bit of build up again with Grozos dropping inside. You can see the combination. The gel in that front third is starting to happen for Jan Etelchevsky's side. There's space out with Grozos tucking in. Antizopoulos looks for that feed in behind. Here is Sito. Former St. George player, suffered a ACL injury. Skatarich putting the pressure here on Bonatik. Bonatik forced to go forward. Venus competing. Jones does well. Now Quilligan looks to feed Grozos. Lovely play. It's out now with Poon, looks across the face. Skatarich was there, but the keeper, and Tiger Harper, cutting that one out again. Impressive coming forward, St. George. With Grozos dropping inside, Quilligan and Jones getting forward. Nice work here from Sapsford. Eunice with a good first touch. Cuts inside. He's got Hammond available. Bonich using his body well. I just thought there might have been more in that. The referee was happy to wave play on. One of the more experienced officials in former A-League referee, Stephen Lucas. Here is Jones. Now Poon. Quilligan to Danaskos. And again, the first time ball looking for Skatarich. Really neat patterns here from the visitors. Quilligan inside. Skatarich couldn't quite wrap the head around it. With any sense of direction. But again, the impressive build up. Just joining us, it's been a terrific opening half hour or so here at the Wanderers Football Centre. Tony Tanous with you, live on Football New South Wales YouTube. The hashtag NPL NSW, let us know your thoughts. The Wanderers who are coming into this. Six wins and one loss. Four wins in a row. Sitting atop the ladder on 18 points coming into the round. Two ahead of Marconi. St. George will feel perhaps that they've deserved more than their six points. They're showing some real intent going forward in this opening half. Relishing playing on this terrific surface. Two teams that love to play good football. And you're seeing that in the early part of the match. Perhaps the thought about the early release. Steve Lucas brings it back. 
Just confirming the goal scorers for St. George FC, Troy Damascus, Connor Quilligan for the Wanderers. Badalato and Sapsford. This is good feet here from Hammond. On the dribble he goes. Just a little bit too heavy for Badalato. Tricky feet there from the youngster in Hammond. By who spent time overseas in Portugal before coming back and joining the Mariners. And certainly one to watch in this round eight. NPL men's New South Wales match of the round. Like I said, two other games taking place, no scores yet. Landon Stadium, Hills United, they're hosting Manly United. 35 minutes in there. We're into the last five minutes at the Palace. Marconi are hosting the Central Coast Mariners. No score yet. Posted on those scores. Delaying the kickoff here, as I mentioned earlier. About a 10 minute delay due to an injury in the under 20s. Wonder is winning that match by four goals to three. Luna over the top he goes again to Eunice. Tenascos beaten in the first phase. Eunice on the dribble now. Out to Pantazopoulos. He looks towards Sapsford. That was the supply line for the equaliser, the second of the Wanderers equalisers. Quilligan, nice touch. Out to Poon. Wanderers ball. Poon was crowded out. Quickly shut down as they tried to spring forward. St. George into counter attack. Poon had three Wanderers players on him quickly. Spadalato looks to switch the play. Now it's Hollinger. Happy to just keep a bit of possession. Feet from Badalato. Now he gets it out to Pantazopoulos. What about coming inside? Now he's on the left foot. Belladura is stuck to his task. But he's a good battle down that far side. Crowd gathered here at the Wanderers Football Academy. Enjoying the fair so far in this opening half. <coughs> Hoping for a fifth straight win as Nathaniel Blair turns. Press here from Hammond. Wins it high up the pitch. Can he create some havoc? Badalato eventually tries the shot. And he had Axford sprawling to his right. Didn't quite hit the target. Just repeating those earlier scores. If you're just joining us, started this afternoon at Seymour Shore where RPR last year's premieres had a thumping 7 0 victory over the Sharks. Saxford looks to take on Sito. Chance to get the cross in. It was just a little bit too high. As Blair tried to turn on it. Hammond tries to keep it alive now. And his shot isn't too far away. In fact, it took a deflection. And it's going to be a corner to the home side. Again, looking dangerous down this near side. That time it was Saxford. Saxford peeling into those wide areas. 
He has shown a willingness, a propensity to do that. In a couple of years, we have seen him in the NPL New South Wales. He's Hollingdale. Four here to Panthersopolis. Out. You are enjoying your Easter long weekend. NPL football. Big games to come tomorrow, of course, in the men's top tier. Plenty of action right across our NPL scene. Plenty of action in the women's top tier on Monday as well. Games to come tomorrow and Monday in the NPLW. So you won't be sport for choice. Get out to the grounds if you can. If you can't make it, Football New South Wales YouTube is your spot. All the games in the top flights of the men's and women's. And a feature match every week in the Football New South Wales League One. In both the men's and women's comps as well. Under has looked to spring forward again down the right hand side with Sapsud making the run, fed by Eunice. And it was Sito who did the defensive job. And George thought that it came off Sapsud's hand or came off Sapsud last. And in the end, the officials do agree. So it is going to be a goal kick initially. Given as a corner. Sita. there, strong challenge. A time from Bonatig. He's already had plenty of action for the Wanderers A League side. Finding it quite difficult. It's been a tough against Skitaric. He's really. Leading the line well for St. George. A new recruit has come across from the Mount Druitt Town Rangers. It's really relishing the football that's being played. Wajana Tarczewski's side. He's Danaskos. Across it goes. Through O'Shea who pulls the strings from the base of the midfield. Where's the number six? Plays in the number six role. Lovely turn this from Jones. Now Quilligan. Both of those players had plenty of quality, not only physically, but a lot of good attributes on the ball. Quilligan showing that here. Play with a futsal pedigree. Featured in our NPL New South Wales Team of the Week in Round 7. And he's showing in the first half. He's got himself a goal. Looking very promising in the number 10 role. Skitaric. Eunice looks to go forward, spring the counter attack. Just couldn't quite get the timing right. Blair ran into an offside position. Mentioned that. Full round of fixtures in the NPL women's, including our match of the round tomorrow. As the Gladesville Ravens take on the newly promoted University of New South Wales. Game featuring a Christie Park. 5 10 pm kickoff on Easter Sunday. Poon looks to get this ball across. Second chance here now for Quilligan. Good work from Chick Luna who goes on the dribble. Past one, past two. Eventually it's going to fall to Hammond. Let's go. 
two games to come. Including a big one out at Landon Stadium, Blacktown City. They're hosting Sydney United 58. Sydney United 58 are really starting to get their season going under Jelko Kalats. As Hollingdale gets forward here, he's got a chance to slide it in behind for Sapsford. And he couldn't quite get it on target. He's going get, to get a second chance here. And he's going to punch it home after Hammond did the work at the back stick. The first effort was a miss kick from Sapsford. It fell to Hammond. And Hammond managed to find his striker. And the Wanderers have come from behind to make it 3-2 here. Just before half time. And the RBB on the far side. They're up in song now. The Wanderers look to make it five wins on the spin. The initial effort from Sapsford, he couldn't get that one goal bound, but he was fortunate that it fell to Hammond, and Hammond's effort was then tucked home by Sapsford to make it 3-2. Sapsford's got a double, and suddenly he goes to five for the season. Hammond with the assist. And that will disappoint Jana Tauchewski. As you can see, just before half time, having taken the lead twice, they weren't able to hold the lead for more than five minutes on both occasions. And a shootout here in the opening half. A terrific showcase of the MPL men's New South Wales. Both teams playing positive attacking football, and the Wanderers might even extend. Here through Pantazopoulos. Couldn't get his shot on target. His eyes lit up. Chance to make it 4-2 just before the halftime break. And it's continuing to cause headaches for St. George FC. Forward it goes from Axford. He's got the likes of Quilligan and Skatarich to aim for. Certainly not a bad option from the goal kicks. Here is Badalato. He's got the Wanderers open up. Perhaps a bit fortuitous, but you take them, don't you? As Hollingdale switches the play. Antizopoulos again. Now Badalato. And that ball in behind was the aim from the wonder, as you can see. Very much part of the game planning from Andrew Christensen and his men. Sapsford trying to slide it in behind for Eunice. He gets on his bike and tries to get in behind quickly. A real avenue the right-hand side in the early... In the opening half, excellent delivery this one as Eunice looks to square it across. No one following in. And St. George able to deal with that one. It's been a wonderful opening half. A game of real ebb and flow. Chances are, are plenty at both ends and goals are plenty as well. St. George FC had the lead twice. Goals coming from Troy Danascos and Connor Quilligan. But both times, the Wanderers were able to hit back within a matter of minutes. Badalato to make it 1-1. And then it was Sapsford who made it 2-2. And it was the same man who popped up after a bit of combination with Hammond to make it 3-2. And that is the score at halftime. We're going to have a break and be back with all the second half action. Make sure you stick around on Football New South Wales YouTube.
And that is a welcome back to Wanderers Football Park, this Round A NPL Men's New South Wales Match of the Round. And what a terrific first half it's been. A goal feast, end-to-end -end action. Two teams with a real positive attacking football template. And that's exactly what they've produced in the opening half. A game that has eb ebbed and flowed. St George FC have had the lead twice. The newly promoted side, former NSL giant. Back up in the New South Wales top flight. And certainly keen to make an impression in their first half. Showed some encouraging signs, but having taken the lead twice, they were pegged back quickly by the team sitting atop the New South Wales top tier in the Western Sydney Wanderers. What a season they're having under Andrew Christensen, their second. In the top flight, they did have one, of course, during the... COVID interrupted, COVID interrupted years as a fill-in for the Sutherland Sharks, but as far as their top flight status is concerned, they're really, after surviving last year, really thriving in season 2024. And they're showing all their attacking intent and qualities in the opening half, coming back from behind to take a 3-2 lead into this second half. They have made a change too at the halftime break. 45 minutes for their central defender in Alex Bonatig. And replacing him is Nathan Barry, the number two. So he'll be alongside Don, Donny Giridic in the centre of defence. So that's the one adjustment for the home side. We'll go through the rest of their substitutes. Their reserve keeper is Lucas Sinnott. They have a couple of attacking options on the bench. Player who's been doing extremely well. Wearing the number 10 jersey, Adam Bugaria. He's got himself a couple of goals already this season. Expect to see him feature at some point in the second half. Another attacking option in Eddie Haddad. He's had an interrupted start to his season. Got 45 minutes last week. We might see a bit more of him after an impressive 45 against the Wolves last week. Also available for Andrew Christensen. Jesse Cameron and Ryan Devine, two wide fullbacks as St. George come forward. Quilligan looks inside. He looks for Skatarich. Barry, the early defensive involvement. The work here from Harry Jones, former Harkoa FC player. You would have seen him feature in the top flight with Harkoa back in the day. Did ever so well in a couple of Waratah Cup finals as well. Harry Jones. Great to see him back in the New South Wales top tier. He's Hammond now looking to counter-attack for the Wanderers. Sapsford, as he loves to do, peels into the wide areas, this time on the left. Ducks inside, looks for the combination now with Hammond, who shows great feet. Can he fashion a shooting chance? Quickly shut down by Rodic. Badalato. We've seen that he's not shy to take a shot. And the units proving real handfuls for St. George on respective flanks. Forward from Sito. I mentioned that knee injury that he did have. Out of action for 12 or so months. St. George went through a big shift in management a few years back and Sito fronted up. Asked for a trial, and the rest is history. He's granted a trial, impressed so much, and he's been a fixture ever since. A real story that Jano Talczewski was keen to highlight. With Luke Vlashtelitsa currently still on the sideline, recovering from an ACL that he suffered in the football New South Wales league season, league one season last year. It does give the likes of Sito the opportunity. 
Roddick has come in as well after a stint at the Bonnie Rig White Eagles. Impressive touches in the opening half. Younger brother of Newcastle Jets, Costa Grozos. As I said earlier, player, both the brothers have come through the academy here at Western Sydney. Part of the fabric here for a number of years. Great to see him playing top flight football. Spend a bit of time at the MacArthur Bulls. Really relishing the move, and here he is trying to skip past Pantazopoulos, doing it extremely well. Look at the dribble here, the skill, and he earns the free kick. A player with futsal pedigree, and you saw the tight feet there on the near touchline. Excellent bit of work from the St. George FC number nine. Initially skipping past Pantazopoulos. So it's going to be a free kick. They scored the opening goal of the match. Can they score the opening goal of the second half? Based on what we saw in that first half, we're expecting more action at both ends. And he's going to be Grozos with the free kick. They do have a certainly a height advantage at set pieces it looks like you know with the likes of Jones Quilligan that time Grozos goes direct looks to catch the keeper out keeper had to recover quickly in Harper great use of the body from Hammond and he finds the forward movement of Eunice excellent work to initially skip past Rodic Rodic tries to stick to his task and does so ever well Excellent defending from the experienced central defender. Not easy to keep up with Marcus Eunice, as we've seen over the last couple of years of the MPL New South Wales when he's in full flight on the dribble. Rodic stuck to his task. feet here of Blair. Hammond trying to create some space in the box. Good work from Barry. It's going to be a free kick for that late Grozos challenge on Pantazopoulos. Just left a bit in there. Working back in defence. Just seen St. George FC have a set piece at the other end, the former St. George Budapest, of course. What a history they had in the NSL. So much success, so many former legends of the game on the famous St. George jersey. Right now, they have to focus on their defensive responsibility. They won't want to concede from a set piece, and Axford comes out and punches. Rosos quickly pressed. Wonder is so effective at winning the ball back quickly. That's part of their DNA. Quite on the same wavelength there, Hammond. Hammond and Eunice it was. Eunice won that one. As we've seen right throughout the evening, in behind over the top. Hammond looked to play to feet. And here's Quilligan now. Chance to lay it across to Grozos. The recovery comes from Pantazopoulos. That's a delightful ball out. The weight on that was superb. Now Hammond can go one on one against Kalajuru. Does well to hold him up. Invites Roddy Chin to support, and that's excellent teamwork in defence. Kalajuru just doing the hold up work, and Roddy biting in to win the ball. Well, 
on a finer detail that coaches love. No doubt they preach the principles, but the execution. And that time it was excellent work in defensive transition. Some instructions coming from the Wanderers bench. Shikluna tries his luck from a long way out. Wanderers reserves, their remaining reserves after Barry came on at half time. As for St George FC, they do have a couple of attacking options of their own. But they remain behind. They're on the counter attack here, looking for an equaliser. Danascos making the forward run. Getting across was Chick Luna, a little bit short on the release. Down that left hand side from Poon. Look at the skill here from Chick Luna. Dancing. Past one and another in his own back third. Now Barry looks to come out. Badalato always thinking positive, looking to go forward. Gurdic happy to lay it back. Lovely ball from the keeper. Working back was O'Shea, and he looks to spring a counter attack with Poon. Now it's Jones. Lovely from Quilligan. Back to the combination was Skatarich, and now Poon on the follow up. And the keeper, after the initial stop, recovers to make an important grab and keep it at 3 2 to the Wanderers. Lovely bit of combination against Skatarich and Quilligan. That's certainly been eye catching this evening. Ten and the nine. Time Danascos tucking inside. This is nice now in transition with Poon again involved. Time Wanderer's got numbers around him. And Eunice can look to spring into counter-attack. They go central instead to Nathaniel Blair. And he extends the lead. And he extends his goal-scoring run in season 2024. The competition's top scorer makes it eight for the season. And he makes it 4-2 to the Wanderers. A counter-attack of sorts from the home side. And having gone behind twice in the first half, they've now got a two-goal buffer. And are they headed for a fifth straight win? Showing their attacking prowess. How quickly did they turn that into a counter-attacking moment? And Nathaniel Blair... Showed his execution skills. Punching it past Daniel Oxford. And it's 4-2 to the Wanderers. Eight now for Blair. Four for the evening for the Wanderers to take them to 27 goals for the campaign. Certainly not shy of finding the back of the net. They've got plenty of attacking threat. And in fact, it was Blair. On our NPL New South Wales socials, he said, there's real belief. We back ourselves to keep winning. Ahead of the match, that was his comments. And certainly living up to the comments at the moment. He said, St. George are a good side, particularly going forward. But we're confident we can get the job done. And it's very much been the way that the game has played out. Sapsford with the double. And Badalato and Blair with the others. Says the Wanderers lead by four goals to two. Approaching the hour mark. Still plenty of time in this one. It's been a shootout so far. We expected more goals in the second half after five in the opener. Some positive signs for the visitors, St. George, particularly 
throughout that opening half, even early in the second half, that created a couple of half moments. Right now, it's the execution and the constant threat, particularly in the wide areas. Eunice and Hammond causing havoc and creating space through the middle for the likes of Blair and Sapsford. They've shown their goal scoring punch and prowess. Shikluna upended as he dribbles through. So he loves to get on the dribble with Dylan Shikluna. Come on, come on. Going through those St. George FC subs, Andrew. De Blasio is the reserve keeper. Jesse Spang is certainly an attacking option. Striker who bagged 19 goals in the second tier of New South Wales football last year. Made a real impression up front. Moving across from Mountains to St. George. Out the window. We've also got Anthony Morabito, plenty of experience in the wide areas of attack there. The other subs, Mitchell Heapy, a central defender. Evan Suras, a central midfielder. As Quilligan looks across, and they get one back quickly, as the Wanderers did on a couple of occasions in the first half. Substitute Sebastian Sarasado, attacking midfielder. So plenty of attacking options at the disposal of Jana Talchevsky if he needs. And they get one back with Grozos on the ball here. Here is Skitaric. Now, lovely work. It was Grozos in the end. And Harper producing another terrific stop. Lovely bit of combination involving Skitaric and Grozos. And it was on his favoured left foot. He plays on the right wing. But he inverts. Cuts in on the left. And that one perhaps a shot in the end. Just a touch too close to Harper. But the keeper had to have strong hands. Here comes the resulting corner. And the Wanderers can look to punish now. In counter attack. Look how quickly they go forward. The release a little bit short. And Sapsford is going to go into the book for that challenge. Nathaniel Blair short with the pass and perhaps a bit of frustration looking to recover it quickly. And he joins Donny Gerdic in the book for the Wanderers. Hey, Saints, we're fucking in this, let's go, come on. Need a bit more from everyone, let's go. And we are going to see another substitution here. Saints, a bit of urgency, come on, come on. Hey, Saints, we all live, we all live, let's go. Now never. Let's go. Come on. Everyone dial in. Everyone dial in. It will be. Luna. just hurrying him off. Come on, Saints. Come on, lads. Come on. Come on. It's going to be a like-for-like -like swap with Jesse Cameron, the number 22. You see him. He's been a regular feature on the right side of the back four for the Wanderers this season. Richard in that starting 11 last week. 1 2 0 at Wollongong. Perhaps an eye on Monday. Keep an eye, of course, on the squad news ahead of that A League fixture between the MacArthur Bulls and Wanderers. But just over 60 minutes for Schick Luna. Very involved in the build-up here with Sapsford over the top now. And suddenly it's 3v2. The Wanderers have the numbers. And that was a heavy challenge from Rodich. And he's also going to go into the book. That was a strong challenge on Marcus Eunice. Challenge that... Perhaps St. George feel they needed to make with the numbers stacked in the favour of the home side. Three on two situation. To see the youngster in Eunice back up on his feet. He does give the wonder as a set piece. 
Hollingdale over the ball. Something going on here in the far corner, the referee. coming across just to have a chat to some of the fans. Might have seen something there in the background. The Wanderers are over a dead ball. They're able to send the likes of Gerdich forward also. Nathaniel Blair's in there. Georgia put up a two-man wall to protect Axford. Hollingdale, we saw that last week he can certainly pack a punch from distance. Scored a terrific goal, the opening goal against the Wolves. This time he does go direct. Tried to catch the keeper out again at that near post as Badalato did in the first half. We are going to see... Another change here. It looks like Poon will be the player that makes way. Rosas is going to switch over to the left-hand side. Good shift from Poon. It's going to be Anthony Morabito. Spoken about the experience. Terrific job for St. George over the years. Comes on in that right-sided attacking role. Nice little knockdown from Quilligan. Brozos has switched flanks. Now Denaskos. Nice ball in behind for Skataric. Can they get one back here? Quilligan's available. He looked for him. But it was important defensive work. It looked like it might have been Hollingdale just tucking back in. As all good central midfielders do. Protecting their back four. Seen some good deliveries from Pantazopoulos. That one might have just... Gone out and then come back in. Here's Sito, quickly pressed by Blair. Forced long. They turn it over. Cameron with his first opportunity to come forward. Nice turn here from Hammond. Jury does well. Milligan again, showing his good feet. Morabito with the ball in behind. Good run here from Jones. Square across, Skataric. Skataric. Jones is in an offside position, so he leaves it for Skataric to fetch. Again, he's showing good work, good strength to hold up the ball. He does ever so well. Winning the free kick. Jones, who was knew he was in an offside position and knew he couldn't play it, left it for Skataric to pick up the loose ball. We'll give you some updates from around the grounds. There is a couple of goals at Landon Stadium and at the Palace as well. But right now, the attention is here. Wanderers Football Park and Grozos on the left foot. Can he get one onto the head of a teammate? Into a dangerous area. Again, it's straight at the keeper, though. No one quite making that run across the near post. That's what they were hoping for. Bit of a higher press here from St. George FC. Give away the free kick. Morabito, who just switched flanks as they came out of that set piece moment. He's going to come back over to this new side and swap with Grozos. Here's Barry. See the idea. Blair was making the run. Roddick has to be careful. He's on a yellow. Axford. Just about finds Jones. It's very tight there with the press of the Wanderers. Now Quilligan sprayed out to Morabito. Skataric 
was available, but he goes central. Again, laying it off. Picking up a solid performance last week. 2 2 draw against RPS Billigan. Showing that he's really starting to settle into top flight football. He's Rodic, looks over the top. Morabito made that straight run. Now Skitaric picking up the loose ball. Billigan, nice ball inside. Jones couldn't quite kill it. Barry clears. Quickly on those scores around the ground. Hills United to pick up a second win of the campaign. They're currently up by two goals to nil against Manly United at home. Strangey among the goal scorers. He got one in the opening half and they've managed to double their lead. Hills in the second half. And at the Palace, Marconi who started this match two points behind the Wanderers. They've got a 1-0 lead at the moment over the Central Coast Mariners. Somewhat of a derby, that match, with a number of former Central Coast Mariners players now featuring for Peter Sakinis aside. St. George look to hit back here from the corner. Can they get the delivery right? They've got plenty of height, and they've got... It was Quilligan at the back post. It couldn't, didn't quite fall for him. Struck him more than... More than anything there, and he didn't quite get time to fashion an opportunity. Now they come forward quickly. Sapsford has got a double already. This time the flag's up. Couldn't get it on target in any case. They have looked a threat every time in counter attack. Mentioned that Blacktown will be in action tomorrow at home against Sydney United 58. The other match will feature Rockdale Illenden. They're at home to Spirit FC. Spirit, who had their first victory last week against the Central Coast Mariners, to take them off the foot of the table. Find themselves a couple of goals. Always a relief to pick up your first win of the campaign after. Doing a great job in the first year up last year. That's an important match tomorrow out at the Rockdale Illenden Sports Centre. Here's Morabito. Does well to get it out to the left hand side. Then Ascos turns it back inside. Still plenty of time for Yane Talcheski's side. They know that they need to score next. If they can get one back, it makes it a grandstand finish. Right now, the Wanderers have the cushion of a two-goal buffer. You've got to be careful. Cito's turned it over, and the Wanderers have shown that propensity to hit quickly in counter-attack. That time, Rodic is already on a yellow. It has to be super careful. Tripping up. Nathaniel Blair. Under his note that if they can get another one, that'll give him a three goal. Buffer, they've already won a couple of games this season by the margin of five goals to two. Beating two of the academy sides in Sydney FC and the Central Coast Mariners in respective games. Round six and round four. Looking to make it 5 2 here with Sapsford. Standing this one up, looking for Hammond. Too close to the keeper in Axford. Encouraging signs they might not get the victory here today. St. George FC. They'll miss it. Well, the lesson out of this, no doubt, will be that when we do score, we can't concede in the next couple of minutes or the next few minutes. It's a lesson that they need to keep that concentration. Right now, they don't want to concede another one. So that will be game, set and match. It's Hammond. Mix it up with Badalato. Yeah, you go, Nick. Oh, 
Again, does the pressing there, just a little bit too aggressive. And he's also going to go into the book. Barry just about showing a bit of the ball, inviting Quilligan in. And Quilligan didn't hesitate, but just too aggressive. And he joins Rodic. In the book for St. George FC. They make another change that brought on midfielder in Evan Suris. Change the player to make way. So a like for like swap there. Evan Suris adding the fresh legs. Nice work there by O'Shea. He finds Skatarich, who finds Quilligan. Important block from Barry. Still alive here. Suris with his first involvement in attack. Spits it out now to another of the subs in Morabito. Nice shape on that ball. Skatarich! And he tried the audacious overhead in the end. And he's certainly a player with technical ability to execute that. And he couldn't quite get it on target. Nice work though, Morabito with the early delivery. It's Easter, a long weekend. The Wanderers looking to pick up the chocolates here. They lead by four goals to two. We are now in the final 15 minutes. Job not quite done. Looking for a fifth straight win. Sixth of the season. In fact, the seventh of the season. Cito's under pressure. All the way back to Axford. Really discovering how life is in the top flight. The distance between second tier and top tier football in New South Wales. Showing that they can certainly belong. Keep working. Iron out a few of those concentration challenges. Encouraging, as I said, that they did hit the lead twice in the opening half. They'll be disappointed that they gave up quick goals. It's Hammond. Panthersopoulos Panthers there just having to hold his run. In the end, they couldn't make it connect. We are going to see some more substitutions here. And it is going to be Sapsford. After a double today, he's going to hand the captain's armband over, is he? Looks like he's coming across to Nathaniel Blair, so he'll get the armband. And Sapsford's job is done for the evening. A double to him, and it is going to be Adam Bugaria. Player I mentioned earlier, he's really making a name for himself in that number 10 role. Ever so well, scoring a couple of goals already this season. A real eye for goal. And he comes on 15 minutes to try and influence and maybe seal the three points for the Western Sydney Wanderers. Here's Hammond. Now Bugaria with his first opportunity to trigger a counter attack. Gets it out to Eunice. That was a strong challenge from Danaskos. It's been a terrific battle all evening. The experience against the youth. Yunus doing well to recover. A great engine. He's going to go into the book, kicking the ball away. Perhaps a bit of frustration after he was quickly stopped by Danaskos. So he is another wondrous player booked. Stephen Lucas. No change around the grounds. Hills continue to lead Manly by two goals to nil. Marconi continue to lead the Mariners one goal to nil. Keep you posted on scores. Final scores. This game starting a little bit later. As the ball's now across. Allendale was looking for the run of Bugaria, but cut out there by... You can stay on the panel. You can stay on the panel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Pena, yeah. Good idea. Inside Pena. working back to Axford. Skitarich has certainly put himself about in that front third. Do 
have a couple more attacking options. One of those is Jesse Spang, and he's, uh, he's one of those players warming up now. The ball comes across. Kalajura has to stay concentrated because Hammond was sniffing around for an error. Skitaric against Gurdic this time. The central defender does well. He uses his body. He's buried. Aaron just dropping off. He's got a couple of goals already this campaign. Got himself an assist today. For the third goal. He's Bulgaria dropping off that forward line. He's got a lot of space. Can he find the execution? Goes on the dribble. One way and the other. Quickly recovering was Rodic, who does well. On a yellow card, so he has to time his challenge as well. Barry now over the top. A nice weight on that. The idea was good, but Axford was quickly off his line. Here's Sita. Into the feet of Quilligan they go. Badalato working back well. Morabito is upended. We are going to see another change. Looks like it will be Jesse Spang who comes on. Let's see. A bit of an adjustment. Connor Quilligan coming off and Grozos going into more of a central position into a creative number 10 role. So good shift by Quilligan. Got himself his first goal of the season. But it's Spang who comes on. Talchevsky goes to a front two. Grozos to an advanced midfield role. Nice ball this time. Morabito through. Spang's in behind. Chance to get one back here. Jesse Spang. He gets it on target. Is he going to get a second chance? Wanderers recover well after another good save by the custodian. Tiger Harper. Now Pantazopoulos feeding the run of Hammond. Is this a chance to seal it now as Hammond dances past the keeper? And the keeper recovered ever so well in Axford. What a great bit of goalkeeping at both ends. Harper initially, and then Axford. Spang was denied at one end, and Hammond at the other. End-to-end -end action. It's been like that throughout the evening. Terrific showcase of the MPL men's New South Wales. Top place against 13th place, but both teams have gone hammer and tong. That time, the challenge from Pantazopoulos. St. George players not liking that one. And the left back goes into the book as well. Stephen Lucas just lets the St. George players know that he's in control. The other cards continue to mount. George know that if they can peg one back, they can mount a grandstand finish. And you just never know the drama that we so often see in the MPL men's New South Wales. Nice ball. Kalajuru over the top. Grozos making the run. Excellent feet here. Grozos tries his luck from long range. And he's certainly a player with the quality to execute. Couldn't quite get it on target there. Just under 10 minutes for the Wanderers. To seal another three points. Marconi continue to lead. By one goal to nil over the Mariners. So as things stand, it will be status quo between one and two. Here's Skataric. Nice work to try and turn that back inside. Yunus up against Skataric.
Here's Skataric. Marked by Jesse Cameron. And it's time to recover. It is going to be a St. George corner. Bang yet to score in the top flight. As I said, he scored 19 goals in the football New South Wales League One competition last year, starting at the Mounties Wonder as he moved across to St George in the transfer window. Chance to make a name for himself, perhaps, and get his opening goal of the campaign. Some pressure. On this coach, Niane Tauchewski. Nothing like the currency of goals. And that was convincing. Bit of defending there from Pantazopoulos. Attacked that with vigour. Made sure he sent it into the grandstand. Plenty of action coming out of the grandstand. It's been a great atmosphere here at the Wanderers Football Academy. See some of the RBB here. Had a few issues. Hopefully they get those sorted as far as the bands are concerned. Understand that they're close to getting all of those bands overturned from the derby a few weeks ago. So all the best to them. The ball slid in behind. Spangs the target. Couldn't quite kill it there in the box. Nice feed from O'Shea. It's only a half chance just to keep it alive in the box. Spang couldn't quite sort his feet out. They have gone to a front two with Skataric and Spang. Strong win there by Evan Suris. He's Grozos. He's had a very encouraging evening against his former club. And he almost finds Spang there. Important contribution from Barry. And it is going to be another free kick. Skatari wants to go quick, but the referee is going to make him take it from the spot. Mascos over this one. Rodic has gone forward. Mascos goes direct. It's not a bad effort. He certainly had the keeper interested. Just had to make sure that he had his post covered. Did the youngster in Tiger Harper? Come on, come on, come on! A couple of real key saves in the opening half. St. George felt they might have been on top. Axford not taking any chances. Now he looks for Skataric. That aerial threat. Now Shea wins the ball in midfield. Now Grozos. Good work from Bugaria. Battle for possession. St. George looking to come away with it. Barry again stands strong. He's had a good second half as Blair looks to play it in behind for Hammond. Excellent defending there as Rodic and Kalajuru both put their selves in the frame to clear that. Suris, son of a former National League great, and George Suris. Any of you remember that name? Involved in the coaching setup at St. George. Junior is on the pitch. Looking to make a late impression. Equally is Bugaria. And he gets it out now to Eunice, who slides it in behind for Blair. Rodic tries to hold him up, and in the end, Axford produces a good stop to keep the margin at 
Two goals, 4-2 it is to the Western Sydney Wanderers. As we approach the final couple of minutes of regulation time. It's been an end-to-end -end match. Not a lot of stoppages. As things stand, the Wanderers are going to go to 21 points. Marconi continued to lead in stoppage time at the Palace. And they will remain within two if they hold on to that result. They go short, happy to keep a bit of possession, perhaps keep it in the corner. And have that two-goal buffer. No need to give St George any possession here. Eating up valuable seconds, and in fact, Eunice comes away with it. Can he create something? Who's on the edge of the box? Betalato it is. Now Hammond. Spang. Working back for the visitors. Beautiful evening. It's been a warm one here in the western suburbs of Sydney. Temperature pushing up towards 30, but beautiful temperatures for football this evening. It's been played at a great pace, great tempo. The scholars have come back in for the Wanderers. So far, they've done the job. Nathaniel Blair getting his eighth of the campaign. And they're just milking it right now. They're keeping it in the corner. We are going to see another change. It looks like Hammond will make his way off the pitch. The youngster who's had a terrific start to life at the Wanderers. He's already had a taste of A-League action. And it is going to be Ryan Devine in the 99 jersey who comes on for Hammond. He's Eunice again showing what a threat he is. He's done ever so well to manage this have the wonder as the youngsters showing their game smarts Christensen will be pleased with what they what what he's seen in the last couple of minutes just keeping the ball in the corner eating up time game management the young heads of the wonder is showing plenty of maturity can they score a fifth or are they just happy to keep it in the corner through Hollingdale and Eunice the frustration here for St George. Quick update from the Palace. Looks like Marconi have doubled their lead in stoppage time, so they're going to seal the three points against the Mariners. And they'll remain two points behind the Wanderers at close of play today. At the end of this round. Two games to come, of course, tomorrow. Landon Stadium and the Rockdale Illenden Sports Centre is the scene for those two matches. Get out to the ground. Will join us on the Football New South Wales YouTube channel. We'll have all the coverage. Make sure you catch up on our MPL New South Wales socials, the match report. 3-2-1. Coach comments. Team of the week. The highlights. So much content. It's been good game management from the Wanderers just to keep St. George away from possession. But are they going to get a moment or a chance? Hit stoppages. Alajura quickly pressed. Strong work from the Western Sydney Wanderers just to apply the squeeze. Make it difficult for St. George to get out. It's been a clinical performance. They've come from behind. They've shown they can do it in many ways. Not only from in front. Twice St. George hit the lead in the first half. And twice the wonder is hit back immediately. In the second half, they've shown a professional edge. They had a wonderful pre-season, which featured more than 20 games. They came into the season ready to hit the ground running. And eight rounds in. 
F, F, F. They're going to make it five from five. His referee Stephen Lucas has another look at his watch. There can't be much long to go now. Forward it goes from Sito. Barry with the header. Now it's going to fall out to Morabito. Is there a late flurry here from the visitors? Shot comes on. It's not on target, though. And that might be the last opportunity. Damascos, who opened the scoring, tried to get one late on the skipper. He's been terrific. He's certainly kept coming forward all evening. As I said earlier, very encouraging signs for the newly promoted St. George FC. It's just about capitalising when they do hit the lead and consolidating. In fact, they gave up the lead twice. It's something that they will no doubt reflect upon as the Wanderers make it five from five. Five wins on the spin. Seven wins for the season. And they sit atop. The NPL New South Wales ladder on 21 points at the end of round eight. It's been a wonderful display, a come from behind display in a terrific contest. The first half in particular, St. George FC really gave a great account of themselves. They hit the lead twice through Troy Danaskos on five minutes and then Connor Quilligan on 21 minutes. But the Wanderers were able to work their way back. Badalato with an equaliser on seven minutes. Sapsford got a double in the first half. His equaliser came on 25 minutes. He gave Western Sydney Wanderers the lead on 44 minutes. They had the lead at half time and then they extended it in the second half. Nathaniel Blair scoring his eighth of the season, the competition's leading scorer. So it's been a wonderful day out for Andrew Christensen's men. They continue to really set the benchmark and set the pace atop the MPL. New South Wales ladder and St. George FC, Yane Teleski's side will take plenty of encouragement from another very good display, particularly in that first half, but there's work to do. They'll know that when they hit the lead, they have to try and hold it and make sure they don't give one up quickly because that's what happened twice. And in the end, that is the tail, the tail that favours the Wanderers who win this one by... Four goals to two. It's been a pleasure having your company on the Football New South Wales. Tony Tanous wrapping up a big victory for the home side. The Western Sydney Wanderers 4-2 over St. George FC.